Cisco ASAV VPN. So this is gonna be around the built-in load balancing capability. So Cisco's got this capability that's available um, at no additional cost that allows you to equally distribute remote access VPN across multiple different devices. Um, they don't necessarily have to be the same version. Um, they don't have to be physical versus virtual. There is some benefits if they are, but it doesn't necessarily ha have to be that way. Uh, load balancing cluster consists of two or more devices. One is called the virtual master and the others are backups. These devices do not need to be the exact same type as mentioned, right? They're uh, with identical software versions or configurations. All act uh, active devices in the cluster carry session load. Load balancing directs traffic to the least loaded device in the cluster, distributing the load equally across all devices. It makes efficient use, obviously, of the system resources and provides increased performance and high availability. So when you're doing this, uh, you know, you've got this VIP that people are going to connect to and from the outside, and they're going to get access to the least loaded ASA uh, VPN concentrator. Again, I've got a link here. Review the details uh, in regards to the link, and I'll put this in the comment section as well. So the algorithm itself, so the master device maintains a sorted list of backup clusters members in ascending IP address or order. The load of each backup cluster member is computed as an integer per percentage, so the number of active sessions. Any connect inactive sessions do not count towards this, that's good. Um, the master device redirects IPsec or SSL VPN tunnels to the device with the lowest load until 1% higher than the rest. When all backup uh, cluster members are at 1% or higher than the master, the master then will take a connection for itself. So all nodes start at 0%, um, and this is the breakdown. The master device takes the connection if all members have a load at 1% higher than the master. If the master does not take the connection, the session is taken by whichever backup device has the least load percentage. If all members have the same percentage load, the backup device with the least number of session gets the session. If all members um, have taken the load, then um, obviously the master will obviously take a, a, a VPN connection at that point. So I've got an inside network, I've got an outside network, now, the caveat with load balancing has got to be L2 adjacent, right? So if you're looking at geo load balancing, then you might be looking at something like global load balancing using DNS, um, that type of activity. Here, if it's uh, in a certain uh, L2 environment um, in your data center, then you can scale this out up to the maximum number allowed. All right, so we've got a good visual of what we're doing. This is gonna be fairly quick, right? There's not a whole lot to do here. So we've got um, the VPN load balancing command. We've set a priority. So this is um, who's gonna take the, the next uh, as master if, if the master fails. The one thing we have to do if we're gonna use the encryption key to secure the communications between if you look at that LB public, which is outside, and LB private inside, the private inside is going to be used to communicate between the devices. And it's going to be encrypted because we're using the encrypted command. So again, we go into VPN load balancing. We set the priority. We do interface load balance public is the outside. The private is the inside. We give it a cluster IP address. We do our cluster key, encryption the cluster port, and then we add the key uh, word to enable it, participate. And now I'm showing you, right? Now we're starting to get into more of the meat of getting the VPN built out and scaled out, right? And you can see five minutes in, we're essentially done, right? Now, things to consider. You probably want a wildcard certificate, right? Um, there's other mentions within the document, so review that as well. But getting it up and running, um, we're done. That's it. You know, four minutes, and it's it's because I'm explaining it.
and you can see here the distribution um, in regards to um, what connections are on what node. So let's give it a try. So we hit that cut. Now I'm getting this untrusted server cert. First off, self uh, uh, self signed. Second is um, the uh, I'm using the IP addresses and stuff like that, right? So wildcard cert would help here. You can see that was dot one eight two. So that's the ASA v two node that we connected to. So even though we hit that VIP, it determined that two was the first to hit. And we can see here we've got the 2.1, right? That was the identifier I used to make sure. Now let's go to um, the ASA V2. And we can see that we have one used and it's terminated on 10.1.252.182. Okay, pretty easy. Now I connected again here And you can see it's 182 again, okay? So I tried it a couple times. There looks to be some persistence there, um, which is great. So what I'll do is I end up connecting that one. I jump to a different node. And I'm going to connect from that additional node and see where I get put. So I left that connection. I enabled it. Uh, that VPN is active um, on host one. This is host two. And you can see this is 181. Log in. And magic. Right, we're connected. Now if we go back and we could have done this on either node. We're on one here. You can see now we've got um, a couple connections, right? But you can see it's starting now to load, uh, load balance. So once you hit 1%, then like I said, if there's no other backup servers involved, then it'll take on the um, it'll take on the, or the master will take on a remote access session. So one other thing that um, if you noticed, I was given back the IP address, 181, 182, right? If you don't want to have that happen and you want a name sent back to you, um, what you need to do is enable DNS domain lookup on the inside. Um, we already have all the other D DNS stuff configured, right? We did that at the very first video, two videos back. So we want to enable domain lookup on the inside, and then we do use this redirect FQDN enable. And when you do that, it's not going to pass back the IP address anymore. It's going to pass. It's going to pass back the name. Um, so that'll help with this, where the certificate's not matching the name or the IP, for example. Uh, and it's expecting that. Now I tested this and it's not working very simply because I just don't have a DNS server on the internal side. Um, but I just wanted to complete that just in case, um, or most of you will want to use the actual host name. So give it a try, make sure you do your testing and get this rolled out. And now you've got scale, right? And some high, high availability, right? If a node does disappear, it then will move that user to the next node. And that's it, right? So the next video I think I'm gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, integrating Duo, right? And then, then I might do the umbrella piece, 
I've already done one like that in the past, but I might keep this in a series. And then we might start adding more tunnel groups.